So this will be a pretty brief a look inside episode today. I went to the thrift store, you know, my usual sort of go for a walk for lunch, and found this really very nice GE radio. This is, I understand, a not undesirable model. Um, let me just read the model f to you. It's 7 2857 A, which I guess there's this and there's a 75. And yeah, they're, you know, not as desirable as the super radio, but come from the same era, the late 70s, early 80s. And uh, I've tried this one out using the plug and it works perfectly. It plays surprisingly loud. It's mellow. It's nice to turn the tone control up a bit, which it has. FM reception appears to be great. Um, AM seems fine, although I tried it in my kitchen, which is a noisy environment. I really, I'll have to try it elsewhere to get a good idea, and also at night. We'll see if we can do any distance work with this. But I'm really fairly excited because I'd kind of given up on getting anything decent in the analog radio um, market from there. So I want to have a look inside. I'm not, don't in anticipate changing anything about it. I just want to take the back cover off and have a look at the circuit board and we'll see what there is in there. Now I'll just show you how nifty this is in some ways compared to a lot of radios. So you open it up, you get a spot for six C batteries and cord and look at the even on this relatively small radio for a plug-in one of the era there's enough space to put the whole cord in without having to cram it in in a terrible way or stuff it in where the batteries are supposed to go that's great battery um, spot is fairly straightforward one two three four Uh, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and one on top. So that's how they've done it for the batteries. That's presumably the speaker magnet coming out the back, which gives you an idea of why it's the depth it is. Um, the antenna is fine. It's unbroken. It doesn't swivel, unfortunately, but that's not. It doesn't really matter. We have only English on the inside of the uh, of the container of the I mean of the battery pack although we do get French and uh, uh, on the outside and not Spanish so presumably that makes it a Canadian model one we do have a CSA sticker on the bottom as well as the UL listed um, listing molded into the case made in Malaysia the date code, unfortunately, wasn't tapped on there, but we have a date code here, which is 6905, I think, but that doesn't really, 05M, I don't know, that doesn't mean anything to me. Hopefully something inside will be marked. My understanding is that these use a mixture of chips and discrete. Oh, I'll have to get a different screwdriver, but they uh, use a mixture of chips and discrete um, electronics in the tuner stage, so I'm curious to see how that works out. So just a moment, let me find another screwdriver. So we'll get back around to the back here. Open this up. There's the power cord, as we saw before. Well, I had done a quick cleanup on the radio, and here we have one, two, three, four, five, and pointing down on the bottom, the sixth C battery for the nine volts. And I should say, a radio like this, if you're not playing it very loud, this is gonna run ages on C batteries. So let's try to get out, let's just have a look. There's one screw here. Let's take that out first. Well, it's funny, this is the same size screwdriver as the other one I was using, but the other one has been mistreated for many years, and it 
and uh, is obviously um, no longer uh, as effective as it used to be. This is, I think, a number number one. This is probably the most common size in electronic stuff. Is the number one. You also get the zero, right? Really little one. And then you get some even smaller stuff. Okay, that one. Let's try. There we go. the screw head on that one trying to get it out yesterday I note some metal shavings on the screwdriver sorry about the email showing up background. So let's see if we've got these out and then where that takes us. One, two. So far they're all the same, which is nice. So it's only three. Yeah. And you can see I wallowed that out a little bit when I was trying to get it out before. So let's see where we are. Just have to get that out there. So there's there's the front of the board. There's the speaker, which just sits in. That's interesting. There's the transformer. Got that old electronic smell to it. And these the reason I had trouble getting these off is that they've been taped on. So they obviously got loose for somebody in the past. Fairly straightforward. That's an odd little board, that. The ferrite's not huge, right? You can see it's a fairly small, like almost pocket radio sized ferrite, which is going to limit its distance performance for DXing and the like. Um, so let's see. There's the there's the power transformer. I'm surprised it's not enclosed. A lot of them are. So let's see if we can find any dates on anything as we look at this. All right, we have another screw here holding the board down. Let's get that off. Lift this up. And oh, that likes to stick to the transformer. It's like they deliberately bent over these two capacitors to, um, to hold the transformer in place. Weird. Power capacitor, probably. This is the antenna. Let's see if I can get that off. Okay, that we can recognize because that's a machine screw. So there's the antenna out. That's nice. And does that mean that we can get this? Hmm. Let's see.
And so down here, that's held in place by another screw. I thought it was just clipped onto a plastic pin. But so that's actually really good. You can replace the antenna on this without opening it up because usually the antenna bracket just falls out on you when you try to do stuff like that. But not in this case. Look at that. There we go. That's Okay, so now we can look at this. That's me knocking over the C batteries. Okay, so now we can go look at the back of this. We've got the tuning condenser. We've got a chip on the other side, which we're not going to be able to see. So there's at least one chip. Can, it, can we see that chip? Oh, we can. Let me find a flashlight. So, let's see if I can turn this. I'm trying to... So if we look down inside there, don't know if that's going to show on the video at all, but right down where the flashlight is going is a chip labeled T900BL or B1 slash K and it's got a 1.1 on it. So down inside here, you can see we've got some electrical capacitors. There's the chip in the center that I was talking about. There are one, two, three transformers, I think, in there. Oh, four, five transformers. I'm not seeing any transistors. There's an inductor over here couple of inductors. Oh, there's a transistor down in there. C930, I think. D7K. Oh, there's another transistor in there. So there are, there are a few transistors hiding inside here. But yeah, it looks like it's mostly being done by the radio chip, and my guess is that we, is that we've got a uh, maybe an audio output stage over here. No idea, but clearly that chip is doing most of the work. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to try putting it to get back together and see that it all works and we'll try it out again now that I've got some batteries for it. Okay, so let's turn it on and we'll see what we can do. A message from Toronto's News. Today's talk, 640 Toronto. Mastron Insurance Group presents Did You Know? Water is the new fire. But. Minus 21, City News Time 233. Top doctors from across the GTA are in agreement with Ontario's Chief Medical Officer that living with COVID spread is about to become the new normal. This comes well, that's depressing. Right, but you're crapping way over your quota. Um, each house has about 11, 12. You just to watch him shift. That gives you and hopefully the public a little bit of a sense as to what living with COVID might look. Anyway, that's the GE. Let me just get the model number right. Um, uh, Seven slash two eight five seven A. These are all over eBay from what I can tell and um, a working one people seem to be asking somewhere between thirty to forty dollars my guess is the lower end of that thirty is about right for a working one uh, I paid yeah, you can see I paid fifteen dollars for this one working fine not you know cosmetically perfect but pretty good happy to have it Perfectly good radio seems to be a great local AM radio and a fair FM radio. I'm less impressed with the FM performance. The AFC is uh, the automatic frequency control really tries to grab onto stations, so it's fine for a strong station. But if there's any sort of 
yeah, it's. I like to turn AFC off on a lot of radios, so. Yeah, it's uh, it's not my favorite, but it's absolutely absolutely fine. But uh, AM, it seems pretty good. It's loud, and it's got. Uh, it sounds pretty good, and. Uh, you know, certainly as good as most of the reasonably inexpensive table radios of the era. So, very happy with that. Nice to have a look inside. Um, yeah, this is just a perfectly good usable radio. And there goes a little bit more of that uh, of that uh, paint. That's you can see a few spots there. One there. Anyway, not a big deal. And. Uh, so it's nice. I still would like to get my hands on a Super Radio. I guess ideally a Super Radio 2. Um, and there are lots available online. They're not super expensive. You can either Super Radio, but the cost of actually shipping one from the US into Canada is, you know, makes it a fairly expensive proposition. So um, I have, there are some Canadian listings for su the Super Radio 3, but that's not really the one that I'm as interested in. So I will keep my eye out in case one shows up. But uh, no hurry, nice to have this, and uh, thanks for watching.